OK, can I get somebody to share with the answer? Um, share with the class your answer for number one. Do you mind reading the question and then sharing it? Which side do we start on before? That side? OK, we'll start over here. Teray? And Teray, if you could put your laptop away, we're not going to need that to the end. Right. So using the order of operations, do you multiply factors before or after you add? That comes from the order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We're going to review that today. And the book kind of explains it similar to the way I explained to you earlier this year. Um, can somebody tell me or share with the class your answer for number two? What's the first thing we do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Dominic? We need to multiply first. Now, I'm going to show you something a little different than what we did earlier, um, what you might have done before. Now, we're going to multiply. Remember I said think about the add and subtract. Think about that as interchangeable. Add, subtract, plus, minus. So minus 1, negative 1. Try, try to use those interchangeably. Okay. So if you look at 3, we're going to do multiply first. What's the sign that goes with 3? So we have a positive 3. And so we're multiplying these two. I have a negative 1 times a positive 3. What's a negative times a positive? It's going to be a negative. So these two, negative and then 1 times 3, 3, negative 3. OK, you see how what I've been showing you kind of fits nicely? OK. And then I'm going to bring this 5 down. And now what's the sign of 5? It's a positive. So we have this 5. It doesn't have a sign, but we could put a sign there. It's a positive 5. And now we have two different signs. So we're going to take positive 5 minus 3. What's, what are we going to do with the magnitudes? What's that? OK. And which one's the larger magnitude? 5. So we're going to keep that sign. So my answer sign is going to be positive. But now how do we find the number? We're going to take the difference. We're subtracting. Since I have a positive with the 5 and a negative with the 3, we're taking the difference. And what's the difference of 5 and 3? It's 2. So we have 2 is my answer. Are we good? Does everybody understand that? Any questions? OK. Uh, number 3. Let's go ahead and do number 3. Who can walk us through number 3? Goldus, go ahead. Right, so even though we have multiply, we have parentheses, and that's higher um, in our order of operations. So when we simplify this, uh, what is the sign of the 5? So I have a positive 5 and a negative 1. Which sign is going to win? The positive. the positive. So my answer sign is going to be positive. And then the difference of different signs. OK, so we're going to have 4. And then I still have this part left over. Right, and then. It's multiply. But what's the sign of 3? Positive. That's also positive. So I have a positive 4 times a positive 3. Same signs give us back what? Positive. positive. So my answer sign is going to be positive. And then 4 times 3 is 12. Very good. Who can walk us through number 4? I'm going to go ahead. Ben, first thing we got to do. Um, 10 divided by 2. OK. So I have, what's the sign of 10? OK, I have a positive 10, and I'm dividing what's the sign of 2? Positive 2. OK, I got a positive 2. So a positive 10 divided by a positive 2 is what? Positive 2. Positive 5. 5. OK, and then now I have everything else that's going to come down. I got 3, and then I got times 5. What's next? Um, negative 3 times 5. I got negative 3 times 5, but what's the sign of 5? Positive. That's a positive 5. So I got negative 3 times a positive 5. And so what is, a, what, is, what is the product of different signs? Negative. Right, so we get a negative. And what's the numerical value going to be? What's the? 15. It's going to be 15, so negative 15. Do you guys understand how we got negative 15? No? We're multiplying. I have a negative 3. Don't think about it as a minus 3. Think it, that's a negative 3. And a negative 3 times a positive 5. They're different signs, so the answer sign is negative. And then 3 times 5, 15. OK? Now I got this positive 5 left over that I got to take care of last. So I got positive 5 minus 15. 
what sign is going to be the sign of my answer? Negative. Negative, and why is it going to be negative? Negative 15 is the larger magnitude, so negative. And then the answer sign is, or the number is going to be what? 10. 10, negative 10. OK, any questions about that one? I would say that was probably the more challenging one. But you can see how it's easy to trip up. OK, so number five. You got number five? What's the first thing I got to do? Right. 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 So same signs. We're going to add them. Keep the signs. So positive one, positive nine, ninety-nine, a hundred, and it's a positive one hundred. And then we got this left over here, right? Okay. And what's the next thing to do? So if I take a positive a hundred, divide by a positive ten, what do I get back? OK, so I'm going to get back a positive 10. Because when you divide by same signs, you get back a positive. And 100 divided by 10 is 10. So now I have left over this minus 9. And what's a positive 10 minus 9 going to be? Positive 1. Positive 1. Positive 10 is farther away from the origin. So that's a larger magnitude. So the positive sign wins over the negative 9. So my final answer positive one. OK, any questions? No, we're good? Those are the answers. So uh, if you want to look at it being worked out sideways, there it is. All right, so we're working on exponents today. And could I get a volunteer to read? Actually, since I'm recording this, do you mind if I read? All right. What you'll learn, to write and simplify expressions with exponents. <coughs> New vocabulary, exponent, base, and power. Why learn this? Google is a large number written as a digit 1 followed by 100 zeros. Okay, You can see it in the box. It's a pretty big number. That would be a bit of a pain to write out, right? OK. And you'll find that there's a number of instances in math where they have a shorthand way of representing what it is you want to do. We already have this in multiply, right? If I add. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. What is that really? I just added it 4 5 times, right? So we can write that 4 times 5, right? So when you take the sum of something over and over again, we can represent that as a multiplication. Well, what we're going to talk about today is what happens when you take the product of something over and over again, the same number over and again. You can represent that with an, with an exponent, OK? So Something I want you to take notice of, we wrote, we wrote this big number, this Google. There's how many zeros? 100. Look at my exponent. 100. OK. Watch this. What about if I took, and I'm going to move this. What if I took the number um, 10? to the second power. What's 10 to the second power? 100, right? How many zeros are in 100? Two. Two. What about 10 to the, oops. What about 10 to the third power? What is the value of 10 to the third power? Wow. And how many zeros are in 1,000? OK. The reason why I'm bringing this up later in this lesson, you're going to use this shortcut. You're not going to expand it out the way they have here with 5 to the third power. Okay. For 10, the exponent corresponds to how many zeros there are. Okay. And that's going to be important for other things we're going to come across and review, scientific notation. So remember that shortcut. I'll try to remind you of the shortcut when we get there. An exponent tells you how many times a number or base is used as a factor. Okay. Factors are numbers that you're finding the product of. You're going to multiply them. So in this case, a base, the factor doesn't change. The base is what you use over and over again. So 5 to the third, I can't tell you how many times students say that is 15. 5 to the third is not 15. I've seen that, mis that mistake so many times. I'm trying to emphasize it. 5 to the third power, 5 to the exponent of 3, is 5 times 5 times 5. How many 5's am I multiplying here? Three. What's my exponent? 
3, OK? Now, if I simplified this and I multiply 5 times 5, what's 5 times 5? 25. So 5 times 5 is 25. And if I multiply 25 times 5, what do I get back? 125. So I'm just simplifying that out. Now, I thought the book's explanation of what a power is, it was different than the way I've ta I was taught. I was taught that you said 5 exponent of 3 as 5 raised to the third power. That's how I was taught. So the book kind of says something different. It says, hey, if you have a number that can be rewritten as an exponent and a base, then that is the power. Does that make sense? No. It didn't make sense to me either, but that's what, that's what the book said, and I'm not going to argue with the book. I know what I was taught, so um, if you guys want to look it up online and see what other information you can give me, great. But that just kind of doesn't sit right with me. Yeah. OK, so any question about what a power is, what an exponent is, what a base is? Can I get you guys to write and take good notes? Write this out and write its equivalent using an exponent. OK, this is really easy. When I rewrite that as an exponent, what do I get? Somebody? Anybody? Daniel, how do I rewrite that as an exponent? No, no, I need to rewrite that so I don't have to write all those numbers over and over again. How do I rewrite that so it's shorter? Using a little number next to a number. Six. Why would you use six? Look at this example right here with the five. How many fives are there? So do you see that number right there? And then do you see that number right there, the base? Do that for this problem. What's it going to be if I rewrite it? I'm going to write 3. And what's my little number going to be? What? Yeah. Is that easy? See how easy it is? Before I give you this pass, can you rewrite these using exponents? that away, please. All right, Daniel. I think you got this now. What's the first one going to be? Uh-huh. What's my, my, little, my little number going to be? You see how easy that is? Your pass is right there. Who's got this one? Yes. OK, you have to be careful about this one. When you write it, and we're going to see why in a little bit, there it is right there. OK, put parentheses around it, because if you don't, it means something different. OK? What would that be if I simplified that? Four. 
it would just be regular 4 because negative 2 times negative 2 gives you back a positive 4. OK? Very good. Now, uh, Gibraltar is at the mouth of the Mediterranean Sea. Its area is about the same as the area of a square 1 and 5 tenths mile on a side. OK? A square with is the same as area of a square with a side of 1 and 5 tenths a mile. OK, find Gibraltar's area. Well, this is the, this right here is the, the area formula for a square. But can somebody tell me what's the area of a rectangle? What's the formula for area of a rectangle? Anybody? What is it? It's, it's length times width. OK. But for a square, the length and the width are equal, right? So if the length and the width are equal, then uh, that's why they say the side, because the side length, it doesn't matter which side you pick. They're all equal in length, right? The width and the length is equal. So that's why they have this formula right here. Area equals side squared, or the second power. And notice I said squared. Right? If you guys look at the tiles on the floor, do you guys see the tiles? What's the shape of these tiles? Square. They're squares. When they talk about area, they talk about in square units. And so they can talk about squares that are the size of a foot, square foot, squares that are the size of a square inch. Right? And so when they figure out how big a room is, they usually talk in square foot. And I believe these tiles are about a square foot. And so you can figure out. If you have more of these tiles, that the floor is going to be, it's going to be a bigger room, right? Does that make sense? OK. So the area of one of these tiles is the side times the other side, or the side squared, or the side to the second power. So I'm trying to get you familiar with the exponent 2 and how sometimes it's called the square exponent. Do you guys understand? Now, if we're talking about how much air fills up this room, not how much floor space we have. We're talking about cubes, OK? And so cube is, it's, it's a rectangular prism where all the sides are squares, right? And so the volume of a cube is square is the side times the side times the side. Side to the third power is the volume of a cube, OK? So sometimes the third power is called the cube. Does that make sense? Sometimes the second power is called square. OK? Yes? In a moment. Now, can, you, can somebody multiply this out for me really quickly? Actually, everybody multiply 1.5, 1 and 5 tenths times 1 and 5 tenths. What did you get? 2 and 2,500. 2 and 2,500. So did you guys get the same thing? Yeah. OK. I do want to review this, because I can't tell you how many students messed up in two areas when I graded the quizzes. So when I multiply, when I work this out, 1 and 5 tenths times 1, times one and 5 tenths, 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 1, 5 plus the 2 is 7. This is where I saw the first mistake. People forgot. And even though they did everything wrong, this is what they forgot, and it messed up the whole problem. So continuing along, 1 times 5, 1 times 1. Now we're going to add it all up. I get 5, 12, carry the 1. This is the other area that students messed up on, is where to put the decimal. And I reviewed this quite a bit, so I'm reviewing it again. For every place of the factors, 1, 1, that's two places. i got to move two places for my answer. So 2 and 2 quarters. Now, in the book, the book says, hey, use a geometric model to represent that formula, where I find the area with the side length of 1 and a half. Let me explain this to you. Do you see this is how many squares? Lengths? One. one. And this is how many? Half of one, right? 
So from here to here, this is one and a half. You guys follow me? OK. And then in this direction, from here to here, this is also one and a half. Are we good? Now, let's go ahead. This is one whole square, so I'm just going to put one here. How much of a square is this rectangle? Half. It's a half of a rectangle, right? And then how much of a square is this rectangle? Half. That's a half also. And then this part right here, how much of a square is this? A That's a quarter, right? Now watch this. And you'll see what they mean by modeling it. If I add all these up, I have one whole square. I have a half of a square. I have another half of a square. And then I have over here a quarter of a square. Well, if I take the sum of all of these, what's that going to be when I take the sum? What's 1 plus a half plus a half plus a quarter? It's going to be 2 and 1 quarter, right? If I rewrote that so that my bottom number was a power of 10, 4 goes into, 10 how many, uh, into 100 how many times? How many times does 4 go into 100? 25. So I could rewrite this as an equivalent fraction whose numerator is 100. 4 goes into 100 how many times? 25. So 25 times 1. 2 and 25 hundredths. Do you see my answer up above, 2 and 25 hundredths? Two and twenty-five hundredths, and I'm just I'm just trying to get you guys ready because you're gonna have to I think within this unit be able to switch back and forth from fractions to decimals. I think that's this unit. I can't remember, but I think we're starting to see fractions in this unit too. Okay, are we good? Now, I would like for you to find these values. Okay, can somebody share with the class the first answer? What am I doing here? Where are we at? Bokar, go ahead. Okay, tell me how we get there. Okay, so let's expand this. When I expand this, what's it look like? Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify it. Okay, so this part, 9. Okay, so I got 9 times 3, you said 27. I've got 81. And then 
I got one more 3 to multiply, right? What's that going to be? 243. We okay? Everybody got that? Okay, remember I told you about the shortcut? If you did this problem, like the first problem that Bokar just did, you wasted a lot of time. What's the answer? Um, do you remember my shortcut, Daniel? Justin, do you remember the shortcut? Uh huh. So this only works for a base of 10. It doesn't work with any other base, so you can't use it on 3 or any other number. The answer is 10 is 1 with 9 zeros. And does anybody know what number that is? One billion. OK? And then this one right here, if we expand that, what do we get? Second power means you're multiplying to itself. And what did you guys get for that answer? 9 and 61 hundredths. That's what you guys got, right? OK. Just for the sake of review, let's really quickly do that problem. So I got 3 and 1 tenths times 3 and 1 tenths. 1 times 1, 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Don't forget your placeholder. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Add that up. I get 1, 6, 9. And my decimal is going to move in two places. OK, we're good? Yep. OK, now I wanted to get into modeling this. And I'm not sure if this image worked out for us. I'm going to try and see if it did. So let's see if we can figure this out. So it's 3 and 1 tenths. Each of these contain 100 smaller squares. OK? So we're going to represent this. Length 3 and 1 tenth. So this would be 1 whole square. Two whole squares, three whole squares, and then I need to show one tenth. So I'm going to stop here. So from here to here, this represents three and one tenth unit. Okay. And then in the other direction, I'm going to do the same thing. So 3 tenths, 3 and 1 tenths one way, 3 and 1 tenths the other way. So now we need to figure out how many squares do we have all together. And we'll just continue this. So I have 1, 2, 3. And if you notice, I end up with 9 full squares, right? Right. So now I'm up to 6. Benjamin, I need you to move to the back of your row. And then, so I have nine full squares, right? Let's 
count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And when we multiplied it, we got nine and sixty one hundredths, right? Isn't that what we got? So right here, how many of these do I have? That's one. Two, three, four, five, six, and then I got one more thing. This right here, this one little corner, is how much? I got one of these, right? Okay, now let me write this out. Remember, the, the full squares I have, how many? Nine. Nine. And then these are 10 one hundredths, right? And 10 one hundredths is really just a tenth. So I got 6 tenths. And then how many hundredths do I have? I have one. You guys see how we did that? I wanted to walk you through that one because it wasn't as easy as the example in the book. Do you guys understand how we modeled that? Yes. OK. All right. So a really quick review of order of operations. Now, I talked to you earlier about this. Please, parentheses. Today we're talking about exponents. That's the next thing. Excuse. Then after that, you have multiply and divide. And I showed you that is on the same level. And the book even says it from left to right. And then the last operation, addition and subtraction from left to right. OK, any questions about the key concept? I touched base with you guys about this earlier, and I explained the way I wrote it here. Now, this is where a lot of students make mistakes. These are not equivalent. They're different. You handle them differently. If you've got a negative sign in front of a number and an exponent, the exponent isn't attached to that negative sign. Do you understand? So you treat it this way. Rewrite it this way. Now, the, there is a time where you will treat a number that's negative as the base. This is how it would be written. Do you understand? So here are two different possible scenarios. Know the difference. Can you guys work this out really quickly? Can you guys work this out really quickly? OK, everybody should be one step beyond this, at least. Has everybody taken and simplified this one step? OK, this is where you try. And now I'm going to reveal to you what the next step is. And you need to make a, a comparison. Do you guys see what I did? OK, do you see how they're handled differently? So. Daniel, I see you shaking your head. When I have the parentheses around this, this whole thing is raised to the fourth power. So all of this is multiplied four times. So we're going backwards of what you did earlier. Okay? But there is one scenario that you can't treat that way. It's this one right here where I have a negative 2 to the fourth. 
In this situation, only the 2 is, is with the exponent. That negative sign, keep it outside. Got it? Then I could expand 2 to the 4th like I did here. Do you understand? OK, so this is just a special situation that you have to know how to deal with it. OK? All right, and then from here, I feel it's pretty easy. That multiplied out is 16. Uh, do you guys see why this became a 4? What happened? There were two negative 2s, two negatives. Their same sign become a positive. Now if you notice in the next line, I have a negative 8. Why did that happen? Go ahead. Different signs. When I multiply, the product's going to be negative. And then finally, do you see the end result between the two? Are we good? OK. Know that. It's going to happen again. And that was a big, big lead in into this example right here. Simplify that. Who thinks they know the answer? What do you think it is? Osmond? You think it's 32? I got that all morning long. Uh, I got another answer. What's, what do you think it is? Zero. I've gotten zero. What are you, does anybody else have another answer? OK. I got 16, 32, and 0 all morning long. OK. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if you take a look and simplify this as I showed you above, this has a negative in front of it, so I gave you a heads up how to deal with that, just like this. Okay, This, you take care of the parentheses, but then look at what you have. That's this other situation over here. You treat them very differently. When you simplify it, you end up with 0. Okay. Now. Hopefully, you learned from that because we're going to use it. These two scenarios are different. They look very similar. Treat them the same way I just showed you. Are you guys done? OK. Um, Zainab, how do I, what did you get for your first, the first one? Uh -huh. OK, so you're going to multiply negative 3 three times, right? So it's negative 3. And this is an example where using parentheses instead of the dot or a multiplication sign would be better. Okay. And 
Go ahead. What's that going to simplify to? Positive 9 because I have two negatives. But then I have this negative 3 left over, so what's the answer going to be? Okay, 27, but look, I have a positive 9 times a negative 3, so it's going to be a negative 27. Okay, did you guys get that? Okay, if you made a mistake, do you guys understand where you slipped up? Okay, now this is treated a little bit differently. Notice I don't have parentheses around the negative sign, right? So how do we treat this? Who can explain this to the class? Tere, go ahead. Okay. And? Is this what you mean? Okay, that's correct. Now expand it. And then what'd you get on the inside? They're all positive, so it's just going to be 27 positive. And then drop the parentheses. OK, we good? OK, and then this last one, that's pretty easy. Simplify what's in the parentheses. What do we get? 8. And then 8 to the second power is just 8 times 8. What's 8 times 8? 64. And I work it out down here. OK, and then here we are. Um, I wanted to post this up. I didn't mean to uncover it for you guys, but um, in your own words, how is an exponent different from a base? Can somebody explain the difference? Yes? Yes? Right. And the base, when you talk about how many times a factor, a factor is a number that you're multiplying and getting the product of. Okay, so the exponent tells you how many times the base is used as a factor. Okay, can really quickly write this out? Write that out really quickly. This has to do with that common error that we were talking about. And can somebody share with me their answer? Bokar, go ahead. Um, no, no. Oh. Mm, no, they want an expression. They don't want it. They don't want to know the result. Oh, um, don't. Are you writing this with parentheses or without parentheses? How are you writing this out? Are you using parentheses to write out your answer? Yeah. OK. Take a look. That's the answer. So a lot of times students struggle with word problems because they're interpreting what the question is asking incorrectly. So opposite of the fourth power of 2. That's the problem where you don't have the parentheses around the base. Got it? And you treat it a little differently. And simplify each expression. We're almost done. Out of time. Trash. Simplify each expression really quickly before you leave. We're almost out of time. Have you worked this out? Who can share with the class the first answer? Uh huh. Right. Who's got the next one?
You're saying positive 625, and you are actually correct. It is positive. Now, there's something I want, you to point, I want to point out to you. If my exponent's odd, and I have a negative base, the answer would be a negative number. But if it's even, even uh, exponent, negative base, the answer will be a positive. And last but not least, Okay, I'll post the rest of this on the message board. You can probably figure this out really. The number of moons orbiting the Earth is one. Anything raised to the first power is just itself. 25 to the first power is 25. 563 to the first power is 563. So you could always put an exponent on any number. Have a nice day. Freezing point of water. Yeah. No, you can get it back at the end of the day. Because it's really disruptive. I looked at you a couple times and you kept banging it and knocking it on the ground. You had a book bag you could put in. Between the. Oh, well. It disrupted my class. Get it in the, the day. Bye. Take your backpack. Next time, put it in your backpack so it's not clanking around the floor. And next time, instead of having two pens and using them like drumsticks, pick one and use one.